We were in Soweto to meet the first black woman photographer employed by a South African newspaper. She went on to become the country's first black woman photo editor of no less than three top newspapers. Hello, Insara SA. My name is Ruth Motao. I'm a photographer, a journalist, a storyteller, and a documentary photographer. Welcome to my space. I was born in Mirrorlands, Zone 2, Soweto. I remember I wanted to be a traffic cop. But I knew I wanted to be an artist. So I knew I, I didn't belong in the office. I knew I didn't belong into the nine to five job. I knew I wanted to be creative. A friend of mine was doing photography, kind of like the idea. And then I went to Alex Art Center to try it out. Well, I mean, I really liked it. And then later then I joined the market photo workshop. We had to do the prints put the paper into a developer. And I suddenly I saw the image and I thought, you know, this is it. And I could feel it. I said, you know, this is where I belong. Ruth is humble as a cup of coffee, but her work has been published in the New York Times and Washington Post. My first camera, I asked my dad to buy me a camera. Without hesitation, I mean, he bought it. Both my parents became my models. What I've learned from my parents is to work hard, never depend on somebody else. And my dad used to say, hard work and truth will take you forward. With her parents' faith and blessing, this artist boldly entered her chosen field at a time where photographers saw firsthand a nation on a knife edge. In 1993, when I was hired as an intern, the industry was male dominated. I wasn't even aware that I was the first black woman to be employed or to be called for internship as a photographer. You know, later, as I became the chief photographer, pictures editor, I mean, I was not even aware. All I wanted was to be the best that I can be. That was the promise of Nelson Mandela's leadership. And in Ruth's son, Bohosi Matao, it delivered for another generation. When we were young, I mean, I used to take him with me to do some assignments, or, you know, do the stories in the township. And I actually wanted him to be an economist. But guess what? He took my camera and then he studied graphic design. He's a layout artist who worked for a newspaper. At the early stage, I went to uh, art school and from there, that's when the love for art as well picked up. Up until today, I'm designing at a newspaper, which is what she's doing as well. What I admire the most about my mom is the love, for, the love she has for people and how, how she likes to express herself like fully. While pursuing new projects like her latest titled Black Beauty, Mrs. Matau sees her greatest achievement as sharing her skills. My mentorship doesn't have really a name because I've been mentoring students for a long time. I mean, even when I was still working at the newspaper, still I had people that I was, used to mentor. I know how it, how it is or how it was not to have a mentor. The space and the opportunity that I was given, I want to give it back. Among those proud as you like to receive these pearls of wisdom is photographer Lerato Kumalo. Being mentored by Umam Ruth is actually very amazing. As a black woman, it's hard to find someone in the photography field, uh, someone to look up to. I'm very happy with I found someone who's not just in the photography industry, but who has a lot of experience and who does storytelling like perfectly. I want to learn how to tell our stories. Tips for young photographers who are starting, they must just work hard. There's no shortcut to anything. Know your camera. Find mentors if you don't have. Find a niche of how you want to do your work. It's okay, you can copy you know, other people what they do, but I think ultimately you'll find your own way to be you and be yourself. My style of photography is social documentary photography. I photograph people in my community that I refer as the voice of the voiceless. So I am the, their voice. 
Black and white photography is more pregnant, more, you know, you have a feel of how the mood is. You know, it creates a certain, I think an, an extravagant mood. I get inspiration from places where people don't like to go to, where people think it's not kosher, uncommon places, where people think it's poverty, but it's not poverty, where people think it's degrading, but those are the places that I go, because those are the people that I photograph. My first conversation with Nelson Mandela was in Buputatswana, 1994, and there was a press conference. We were all sitting down, members of the press. He pointed at me, say, hey, you. And we were all looking because we didn't know who he was talking to. And they say, hey, you, schoolgirl. And everybody just looked at me and started laughing because I was this tiny and then young, you know? He asked me why, why is I not at school? And I said, well, I am working. I said, oh, no, you're too young to be working. You must go back to school. From then, then everybody called me schoolgirl. I think the concept of Mandela himself is humility. I have been his photographer for a few times. Once we went to Kunu, and then once it was him and Bill Clinton. And every time when he meets somebody, he'll say, I'm Nelson, and which is known that he, this is Nelson, but he'll always introduce himself. So that for me, I mean, that's humility. Mandela Day for me is living a life with purpose, living a life saving other people. It's not a once-off thing, it's an everyday event. For Ruth, there's a fail-safe way to say, hey, South Africa, we're in this together. If I were to put Mandela Day in a frame, for me, it's the full knowledge that I have overflowing to somebody else that is giving my service to the next person. That, that is Mandela Day for me. This trailblazing artist's way of making the world a better place would be starting a photography school to encourage black children to make this a career. If anyone can do it, it's Ruth Matau. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 6, repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.